Right, so today I'm going to give you some quick tips on how to diagnose and potentially resolve an E911 fault on a Samsung heat pump. As you can see here, we've got the error code up on the screen at the moment. Now, E911 just means essentially that the flow is not high enough when the primary circulation pump is running. So the first thing I would always check would be um, system pressure. As you can see here, ours is up to 1.5 bar, but if, if yours is too low, I would always check and then top that up. And then I would also check um, all the filters and all the strainers on the system. If they're clogged up with dirt, that's going to reduce your flow rate. Uh, so once you've checked uh, your system pressures and all your filters and stuff, um, I would then try and get the unit going again, or at least get the circulation pump back on. So we just turn the heating back on here. Our pump will kick in any second now. It has. If, the, if you press the gear button and press OK on operation status, when the water pump is lit up in blue, the primary circulation pump should be on. So if that lights up in blue and your circulation pump isn't on, I would check the connections on the pump and also check the wiring on the terminals inside the, inside the memory control box. Um, the live for the primary circulation pump is going to be in B8 and the neutral is usually in B7. So once you've got the pump on and the pump is operating, I would then check the flow rate on the controller, which you can do by holding the up and down arrows at the same time for six seconds. Type in the service mode passcode, which is 0202. Then you're going to scroll down to indoor zone option. And then you're going to scroll down to indoor zone status information. On this one here, as you can see, it's 24 litres a minute. Um, the minimum for this unit to operate is 7 litres a minute, but your optimum flow rates for each machine is going to be a lot higher than that. Um, <clears throat> if this is reading below 7 litres a minute, that's what's causing your E911. Or if this is reading 80 litres per minute when the pump's on, it will also cause your E911. Now, if it's reading 0 litres per minute, <clears throat> it would indicate that there's probably either a full block on the system uh, or potentially that the flow sensor is uh, in a short state on the inside but I'll tell you how to test for that in a minute. Um, if the flow sensor is reading 80 litres per minute it would indicate an open circuit so it could potentially mean that the flow sensor cable is unplugged from the board here. You see this white plug labelled flow sensor. If you want the connection numbers it's CNS057. So just make sure that there's no breaks in this cable all the way down to the flow sensor and then it's plugged in nice and firmly and screwed on there. Now I'm going to show you how to test with a multimeter how to figure out if the flow sensor is shorting or not. Right, so on this system here <coughs> we have an inline flow meter so I know that at the moment my flow rate is somewhere around about the 24 litres a minute mark. And if I was still getting an E911 here, or the flow rate was reading zero on the controller, I would look to check um, the voltage coming back from the flow sensor itself. Now the, flow, the voltage on the flow sensor itself is only between zero and five volts. <clears throat> um, so you want your multimeter set to uh, voltage on the DC current side, and then what we'll do is um, we will put our multimeter leads across the white and the blue pins on the flow switch plug. And as you can see here on this one, it's reading 1.6 volts, which on our voltage scale for the flow rates on the flow sensor, we know that that is roughly about 24 liters a minute. So if here you're reading zero volts, then that would indicate that the flow sensor is in a shorting state and will need to be replaced. 